Bitch. I'll be right back. Hi everyone, I'm back. Today we're gonna talk about two different ways to cast circles. One being a full ritual method that you will need a few, not a lot, but a few supplies for. And the other one being a on the go or minimalist method uh, that you will not need anything except for yourself. These methods are how I have modified and adapted circle casting. So feel free to take what you want from this video and modify or adapt anything to your personal preference. First off, why do we cast circles? Circle casting creates a magical barrier between you and the outside world. This is both to keep your intention, your energy focused inside of the circle and to protect your practice, whatever it is that you're doing and yourself from outside energies. The first thing before casting your circle is you will want to be clean, both spiritually and physically. A lot of people like to do ritual baths or take a shower or something before they uh, cast circles. You know, but for the most part, I just don't wanna feel gross. The second thing is to wear clothing that you're comfortable in. I personally like to wear big billowy skirts, like maxi skirts or leggings. Some people will have a special garment or outfit that they like to wear. Um, some people will like to not wear anything. The key is to make sure that you feel comfortable in it. And thing number three, don't eat a full meal beforehand. Of course, you don't wanna feel like faint or so distracted by hunger that you don't have the focus, but you also don't want to feel super heavy and sluggish. Also, eating food is a great way to ground yourself after any spell work or ritual work. So if you can hold out, try to save the uh, heavier, bigger snacks and full meals for afterwards and do a light snack if you need to before your circle casting. Let's start with the full casting. You'll need salt water, incense or an herb bundle, matches or a lighter, and a compass or a great sense of direction. An optional tool here is anathema, but you could use your hands or a wand if you prefer it. Make sure that you have all of your supplies inside of your circle for both your circle casting and any spell work that you plan to do within your circle once it is cast. With my phone compass, I will find east, and that's where I start so that I can end up facing the north, which is where I set everything up. You can always alter this if you want to start or finish facing a different direction. Start by taking your salt water and draw your circle clockwise. If you don't want to get any water on your floor, which I get, you can just dip your finger and hover it above your circle. or you could sprinkle it around your circle. That's an option as well. Now take your incense or bundled herb wand and do the same, drawing your circle clockwise. Here I decided to use my own loose incense blend using alder, rosemary, mugwort, and rose. If you have trouble visualizing your circle, you could lay out a string or flowers, or you could have a round rug or blanket that can represent it physically. Now with my athame facing the east, I will say, I invite the element of air as I cast my circle. Then facing each direction, I invite each element. South for fire, west for water, north for earth. If you're working with deities or want to include the element of spirit, you can invite them here. As above, so below. With my athame, I will draw my circle clockwise one more time, this time finally cutting away my circle from the outside world. The circle is cast. To close your circle, you will face each direction turning counterclockwise and thank and release each corresponding element. 
Lastly, I will counterclockwise hover or run my hand over the circle, healing, closing, blurring that line so it does not exist. The circle is closed. So let's talk about some pros and cons of this particular circle casting. Having this become a natural ritual for you really puts you in the right headspace. It helps you get into that meditative, connected zone. It gives you a stronger connection to the elements because you're using each one of them. You're facing each direction. You are so grounded, so oriented to where you are. And I personally believe it creates a stronger barrier because you're putting more energy into it. You're putting more effort into it. The cons would be that it requires more items, more setup time. It takes longer in general. Uh, to do and it's also not very secretive. It's not very discreet um, If you were trying to stay in the broom closet or you just didn't want people to know what you were doing It's a little bit harder to cover up now for this on the go or discreet or minimalist circle All you will need is a space where you feel safe and comfortable and maybe a compass or a phone with a compass app or just a really good sense of direction even that is really optional. I just prefer to know where I am in the world before I start a circle casting. Once comfortable, I will start to visualize a circle barrier being formed around me. Internally or externally, I will recite, air, fire, water, earth, I invite you to my circle. And here I try to feel each corresponding direction as I call them. This circle is now cast. It protects me, my energy, my magic. It is my will, so it is. In my full casting, I feel like it's less important for me to say it protects me. Um, just because we're doing that full cleansing, that full uh, use of each of the elements, we're drawing the circle with them, I feel like that is protecting me. Since we don't do that here, I like to replace that with a confident, clear affirmation that I am now protected. To close this circle, all you need to do is think and release each of your elements and visualize your circle drawing back into the earth. The circle is closed. So pros and cons to this one. It's a lot faster. It doesn't require anything except for maybe your phone compass or a good sense of direction. And it's super stealthy. So some cons about this is sometimes I feel like it can feel less strong just because I'm not putting as much physical energy into it. And I also feel like it really requires a lot of confidence in your craft. You need to feel confident that you are able to protect yourself, that you've created this. You have to be great at either visualizing or feeling. And if you have doubts or you're concerned that it's not strong enough, I feel like that also kind of weakens your barriers. So you really want to be confident, which I know can be hard. So this is something that I recommend you practice. Um, just open and close some circles before you plan to do any spell work, like just oh, sit down, open a circle and close a circle using this method so that you become more comfortable with it before you start to use it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up or a comment. I love hearing from you guys. If this is one of my first videos that you're watching and you enjoyed it, you can also subscribe because we're going to post some more stuff coming soon. I promise. Thanks again and I'll see you guys next time.